Dr. Crippen is interviewed on television about her scientific breakthrough. She genetically modified the measles virus such that it destroys cancerous cells. She claims that all of the cancer patients on whom her treatment has been tried have recovered thus far. Three years later, the scene changes. We observe that New York City has become a desolate and barren city, devoid of human life. Roads and buildings are covered with grass, abandoned vehicles line the roadways, and the city is silent. The apocalypse appears to have come. Robert Neville is driving across the desolate city with his dog, Sam. A herd of deer darts across his path, and he pursues them in his car at high speed. When he attempts to shoot them, we realize we're on a hunt. Deer split up and ran along a route that was blocked by abandoned cars. Neville chases on foot, attempting to catch one deer. He has the deer in his sights as he rounds a corner, only to be beaten to the kill by a lion that probably escaped from the New York Zoo. Robert is torn, either shooting the lion and its family, who have now entered the scene and leaving the deer to them. At this time, Robert's watch alarm goes off, and he walks away, bringing Sam with him. We come across Neville's house. It's a regular American detached house, yet it appears to be in the middle of a combat zone. Neville closes, locks, and covers every door and window with large steel shutters after a bath. He sleeps in a bathtub with Sam, weapon in hand, as screaming fills the house. He dreams of Zoe, his wife, their kid, Marley, and Sam as a puppy trying to leave New York. We see Robert clothed in a military uniform. As a military doctor, he resolves to stay in New York on his own to attempt to halt the epidemic. They inform Marley that they are going on vacation. The dream sequence is interrupted by Neville waking up to face his lonely reality once more. Robert exercises and walks down to the basement of his fortress-like home, where he keeps a modest, yet high-tech laboratory. We can tell that he has been experimenting with a vaccine for the virus that has killed off the majority of humans. In attempt to develop a viable treatment, he tested the vaccination on mice, apparently only one of hundreds. Except for one, all of the mice are quite aggressive. Robert takes note of this mouse and determines that the substance in question is ready for human testing. Later, Robert visits a video rental store and talks with some mannequins he has set up, his sole interaction with the human form. He appears to have devised a game for himself in order to keep keep the craziness at bay. Later, while looking for supplies, he visits some adjacent condo flats and comes upon a room with a bed enclosed by plastic wrap and another room with two cribs. We can see the sadness in his eyes as he mourns the death of loved ones. Later, we hear Neville's radio message, which is broadcast on all AM radio channels. It claims he's alive and will be waiting for other survivors at the bay's docks at midday every day. When Sam spots another deer, Robert and Sam go after it. The deer rushes inside an ancient structure at ground level. And and Sam pursues it, despite Robert's efforts to keep Sam at away. As Sam refuses to return on his own, Robert enters the building. Robert searches the dimly lit rooms with care. He discovers the deer and Sam's bodies hidden behind an old desk. An infected male then emerges from the shadows to assault Robert and is shot dead. Sam and Robert both begin rushing through the building. More infected come and start chasing them. He battles them all and both escape from the building. The leader of the infected is unable to pursue them, since his skin burns when exposed to sunlight and after yelling at Neville, he flees back into the protection of the darkness. Soon later, Robert lays a trap for one of the infected. He is successful and returns the captured female infected to his lab. He tries the vaccination that made the mouse less aggressive, but it does not work and the woman collapses. He revives her with an adrenaline shot and continues to experiment with serums in the hopes of discovering a cure. That night, he dreams about his wife and child trying to escape New York during the chaos of its evacuation. He recreates the fear and dread on the streets as residents attempt to get away before the infected take control. Neville awakens again, this time with a terribly sad expression on his face. He recalls his birthday the next morning. When he gets to the video store, he discovers that his mannequins have been relocated. During the night, the infected set the identical trap he prepared for them the day before. Neville gets caught in the trap and collapses. He wakes up horribly injured, hanging upside down and bleeding. Sam had been patiently waiting for him. He eventually cuts himself free just as night falls but he trips over his knife and impales his leg. The infected commander then emerges with infected dogs who attack Robert, but Sam protects him and manages to crawl back to his car to fetch a handgun, which he uses to shoot the infected dogs dead. When he sees Sam collapse from a bite wound, he lifts her up and places her in the car. When he comes home, he places Sam on a table and delivers an experimental vaccination to her. When Neville notices Sam's hair starting to come out and she tries to bite him, he is forced to murder her by strangling her while she fights in his arms. As he hugs his lone buddy farewell, tears fall down his face. He then goes to bury her in the streets. In a fit of wrath, he intends to confront all of the infected. He drives his SUV towards the hordes of infected that walk the streets at night. He nearly goes off the pier and crashes, and the infected flip his SUV.
SUV. A dazzling light falls on him just as he's going to die, and he blacks out. He experiences more nightmares about the past while blacked out. This time, he dreams about the chopper in which his wife and kid fled New York. A nearby chopper is assaulted by infected as it takes off and crashes into the aircraft transporting his family. He awakens in his home with Shrek on TV and stitches in his knife wound. Anna and her son Ethan, who heard Robert's radio message and rushed to find him the day before, rescued him. Anna reveals her desire to depart New York and visit an immune survivor's colony in Vermont. Robert, on the other hand, claims that he wishes to be alone and that such a location does not exist. Later that night, Robert notices the infected assaulting the house. They had followed Anna back when she rescued Robert the night before. Despite Robert's extensive home defenses, the infected are so many that they break the shutters and enter the house. Robert, Anna, and Ethan go downstairs to the basement lab. During the frantic battle, Robert notices that the sick female he had kidnapped earlier and tested the viral vaccine on had returned to her human form. Alpha Vampire creates cracks in the glass chamber, in the shape of a butterfly, to indicate his desire for the female vampire's return. Robert takes her narcotic drip and transfers her outside the glass room, saying to be listening to God. The Alpha Vampire orders the other vampires not to assault Robert, who is currently vaccinating the female, in order to return her to vampire form. While Robert apologizes for murdering several vampires in his tests, the Alpha Vampire picks her up and leaves with other vampires. Robert, Anna, and Ethan now live together and continue to hunt for more human survivors via AM broadcasts.